Hello, hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, in today's video, we're gonna do a little sit down story time talk. Um, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and let's jump right into the video. What a wonderful So today I decided for Pride Month, I'm going to start to get a little deeper into my life on YouTube and really start talking about my experiences just as an open non-binary individual. I wasn't always non-binary, right? This is, this term um, hasn't always, I just haven't always known about non-binary individuals, honestly. I probably didn't learn about non-binary individuals and like third gender and all that kind of stuff until low-key college. Um, and so my whole life I grew up just thinking I was a gay boy, right? Um, and so, I don't really know how, I just don't know the direction I wanted to go in for this video. I wanted to sit here and talk to you about my first like love experience with a guy. Um, and so I think that's the route I'm going to go with this. So I... <laughs> remember the very first time I really fell in love with another guy. Um, I had a summer job. I've always had a job. I started working when I was 13 years old um, and I started working um, during the summer for a summer program called One Stop, um, which was basically a program set up in inner cities to allow youth the opportunity to have a job. And so they would place you um, and a job and you would work there the whole summer and you would get paid through one stop to help whatever place. So for the longest, because when I was growing up, I had to take care of my little cousin. Um, I had to be placed in daycares. So for a very long time, I worked in daycares. Um, my very, very first job was at the YMCA in Inglewood. Um, and I remember being so nervous because I had, I never had a job and I didn't know what I was going to be doing. Um, and so I later on found out that I would be working with kids as kind of like their after school person that like hung out with them and helped them and helped them do their homework and eat snacks and like wait for their parents to get off work and come pick them up. So I got placed at first with the younger kids, which was basically preschool all the way up to about, if I remember fourth grade or fifth grade, I think. There was two different sites. There was the younger kids and the older kids. So the older kids were all the kids in middle school. Remind you, I was probably exiting eighth grade, going into ninth grade, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, so I started off with the young kids and uh, there was this guy who was there who I believe at the time he was probably like 17, 16 or 17. Oh my God. <laughs> And um, he was fine, let me tell you y'all. He was the very first man I ever fell in love with. He was like five, nine, probably six feet, honestly. He was chocolatey, dark skin complexion, beautiful muscles, very nice physique, very masculine, very the opposite of what I was back then, right? Um, and so of course I had an attraction towards him and I never said anything to him about it in the beginning. Um, we actually ended up being placed in the same like group together. So he had his own group of kids that he watched. And so I came in as like his assistant to help him um, and stuff like that. And it really did start off as a friendship. It kind of started off as a older brother, uh, younger brother type of relationship. You know what I mean? Clearly everyone knew I was gay already and people knew I was different. And so, you know, that was already there, but he never like treated me differently because of that. And so I think because of that, I ended up like really gravitating towards him because before that, my experience with straight men like him were negative. So we worked during the summer together literally all summer. And at the end of summer, the YMCA used to take all of their kids to camp in Big Bear, right? They had like this um, place in Big Bear that I think was owned by the YMCA at the time. And he went and he was a camp counselor and I was a CA, which was a, a counselor's assistant. Um, we had never really experimented with each other like that up until the point we went to camp together. Um, and camp for me was really hard. It was the first time I was ever really away. Um, and it was also the first time I was kind of forced 
to be in a group of guys, like in a very close setting, like sleeping in the same room, showering together, like things like that. I'd never really experienced that yet. And of course there was like altercations with me and like people not wanting to like be in the same room as me. And it really like, um, it just, it, it created this uproar, right? Because at first I wasn't placed in the cabin with him and his group. I was placed with all the other CAs in a bigger cabin. Um, and that is where the altercation happened between me and another CA. And so they decided to just place me in his cabin. We're just going to call him Jay for the, just for the story. We're going to call him Jay. Um, they placed me in Jay's cabin because they already knew, like, we were close, right? And so they knew he wasn't going to, like, make fun of me or, like, there wasn't going to be any issues. Um, I'm also going to smoke because I feel like I need to smoke because I've never really shared this story just in camera. Um, some of my older, older friends probably remember this story if they even remember. But um, I am smoking a Far Out, which is a infused pre-roll. Um, but yeah. So, yeah, so I ended up moving to his cabin and everything, of course, was great. And I ended up like rekindling with everybody and making friends and all that kind of stuff, really because of him, I believe. But there was one night in particular where um, all the campers were like out, like doing stuff like activities and I was in the room and he was in the room and we were like taking our showers and stuff and just kind of getting ready for the day and it was the first time he ever really played with me in a sexual way like you know like hugging me and like being very close and intimate and things like that but not being intimate right um it's the first time I believe I saw his like private area and things like that and again, nothing sexual happened during the camp, right? It was just more like playful, like ha 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 type stuff. So fast forward to summer's over and I'm done with the YMCA. He worked there full time, right? Um, so I'm assuming when he got done with school, he would go there or college. I can't, I really don't remember his age. I just remember he was way older than me. So that's another reason why I've never told this story. Cause like... <sighs> um, but yeah, so after camp is really when I kind of started to tell him I had feelings for him. And I remember being really scared at first and like, I didn't really know how he was going to react to it and all that kind of stuff. He was the first guy I think I ever really told I liked. And, um, he was nice about it. He wasn't mean. Um, of course, he told me that he wasn't gay and like, you know, nothing would probably ever happen between us and things like that and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we continued to hang out. We really continued to kind of have that friendship bond. Um, and there was one day um, it got physical. Like I don't know any other way to put it. We got physical with each other. Um, and it started out with us play wrestling, right? So we came over, we were chilling, and we ended up somehow wrestling with each other. And it was the first time me and him actually shared a kiss between each other. Um, and I just remember falling head over heels in that moment. Like, I was like, this is it. Like, this is my moment, right? Well, after we shared our first kiss, um, things kind of got weird between us. He really became a little bit more distant. It was the first time I ever... I think experienced somebody pulling away from me and me not really understanding because he never really shared why he pulled away from me in a sense. Um, and it wasn't until I went to high school, i never forget it, I was going to Inglewood High School, which was the same high school he went to a few years prior to me being there, of course. Um, and he, I remember him telling me that I wouldn't make it at Inglewood High School. And because I was gay, right? He was like, I don't, you're not going to make it. Um, and of course I, I graduated from Inglewood High School, was the class president, was in every club. So like I, I really, I, my, my goal was to show him that I would thrive in high school. Um, and so I want to say maybe I was in like 10th grade is when we officially might have done something sexual. Um, we weren't hanging out anymore as friends, like right, we weren't like friendly anymore. I didn't see him as like my brother anymore. I didn't like, I, I couldn't understand why somebody who I caught feelings for and knew I caught feelings for would kiss me and then stop talking to me. It was very like new to me. Um, and we, of course, later on ended up having sex with each other. 
um, a few times throughout my like high school career. And then he actually ended up leaving and enrolling in um, like uh, the service, I guess I'll call it. I don't want to say which branch he went to because I don't really want to like give out too much. But um, yeah, so um, he ended up going to the service. And actually what's so funny is while he was going through like his training and stuff, we still talked and like, he would get done with training and like would go to his room and like we would like video chat and like stuff like that and that was back when skype was real big so we would skype each other um and that's where he shared that he had had other experiences with men um you know out when he was in service and there were like a few times that he would come back home and we would, you know, hang out and hook up and things like that. So he really became like my first um, person that I had a real like physical like relationship with, I will say. Um, and I would always do it. If, if he told me he was coming home, you better believe I knew we were going to hang out one day. I knew what was going to happen. I would plan for it. I was ready. Um, and I think that really became my downfall when it came to him because he couldn't do any wrong in my eyes no matter how many times he would tell me like you know nothing's ever gonna happen like that um and so there was one day we were skyping each other and he shared that he had a girlfriend and I was like kind of taken back because he had never mentioned this to me I never knew about this and he had mentioned that they were getting pretty serious um, to the point of like marriage and kids. I'm not, I don't want to go too deep into it, you know, because like, but yeah. And so I, we stopped talking from that moment on. Like I never, I didn't, I couldn't, I just couldn't wrap my mind around it at the time, you know. And so ugh, I was just so heartbroken for so long over this guy who like could care less about me. Do you know what I mean? And um, I learned that I had a pattern with men now, right? Now that I'm older and in therapy and like working through all my issues, I'm learning that I've had a similar pattern with men, um, especially men who are not out. Um, and so, you know, I know everybody calls them down low men or DL or whatever, but um, those have always been the men who have shown an interest towards me. Um, in a sexual way, I guess I'll say. I've never really had a DL man that's wanted to date me, like date, date me and come out and all that kind of stuff. So I've never had that experience. Um, I have, however, dated DL men and had like a side relationship with them and like all that kind of stuff that comes with the relationship. But in their minds, it wasn't a real relationship because they were never out and open about it, right? So there was always kind of that um, confusion. Um, and... I think that's always been my downfall is that I've always just kind of wanted this manly, masculine man to like fall in love with me and all this kind of stuff and blah, 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 blah. Um, and so I, it's hard for me to talk about these things even on camera because I for so long have been quiet about these things and not shared certain things about certain experiences with people because like, why you know why um i don't want to shame anybody i don't want to try to expose anybody or put anybody's business out there but it is a part of my story and it's a part of my life that has affected me and has made me who i am when it comes to men right and so um just being this feminine person i believe that like i don't know if i will ever find like the person that's meant for me do you know what I mean like, I don't know if there's really a man out there that is gonna want me wholeheartedly and I know that might sound like crazy and like all this kind of stuff and I'm not trying to be negative or be like oh I'm sad because it is something that I'm working through because at the end of the day being me comes with certain stuff right like it comes with just baggage and I personally, as a 29 year old, have has, has never found anybody who wants to put up with that or wants to deal with that or wants to like be true to that, right? And I, in, even in the gay community, people are like, why don't you date somebody that's out? Well, that's a lot easier said than done, right? Because most of the gay community fantasizes over masculine men anyway. So the fact that I don't fit in that box alone 
people are not interested in me, right? And it's happened time and time again over my life where I've met gay people and like felt a connection and been like, okay, well like, would you ever think of dating someone like me? And it's always the same story. It's always, oh, you're so funny. You're so amazing. You're so great, but we're just friends, right? Like I have a different type or blah, 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 blah. And there was a point in my life where I was like trying to figure out my femininity and like my masculinity and how to blend those two together. And so that was a weird, awkward time for me. And then I decided to just kind of live my life fully feminine because that is where I feel more comfortable. And I think be since I've done that, it has opened up doors for me as a person, but it's also like hindered me when it comes to my love life, right? Because to be with someone who lives out loud like me is a lot. And a lot of the times guys don't want that. And I think in my younger years, right, like sex and intimacy and fun, and all that stuff, like that was cool. And that is what filled me in a sense to like think that everything was okay. And then it wasn't until I got a little older where I realized I was using sex as a coping for love, for a relationship, right? Because in those moments was the connection. In those moments, we were connected. And it took me a really long time to understand that sex was just sex for a lot of these guys, right? There's been a lot of people in my life, friends and people who have come in my life and we've had experiences together and, you know, we no longer are in communication. And I've learned that people are ashamed of their sexuality if it's anything outside of the norm, right? So because I've hooked up with straight guys or guys, and I don't even want to put quotes, that was wrong. I've hooked up with people who are straight identifying, right? Um, people get ashamed to me because of that. And it always kind of placed a little like blame on me for me being who I was because it felt like I was the one that got it taken out on because it was with me, right? So we would be good friends and we would build a great relationship and stuff and then something sexual would happen um, and then I would lose a friend. And so that was just kind of like the repeated story with me and men. So my whole life, I've never ever dated out loud and open, right? Um, and here I am, do you know what I mean? And so I don't know, I know there are other people out there that share the same story as me and has never really had an out and proud relationship the way that I have wanted to. Um, and I believe it can happen. I believe it can happen. I think it's going to take a lot of work and it's going to take somebody who is truly strong within themselves and truly knows themselves, you know, and I don't, I'm not picky against like a straight man or a gay man or whatever, you know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff I don't even really think about anymore because I understand the sexuality is really on a spectrum. Like it really, you know, you can't help who you fall in love with. You can't help who you feel connected to. You know what I mean? Um, and I think there have been a lot of connections I've had that have been lost because of shame and guilt and not wanting to walk down that path. You know what I mean? I'm always told that I'm strong. I'm always told you're so brave to be yourself and blah, 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 blah. But then I have messed with men who are not proud of who they are and can't stand up and be who they are. Do you know what I mean? And so it's just always been like this weird spot for me. And I wish I had the words for it and I wish I could explain it, but like, I don't know. It's been something on my mind, especially during Pride Month. Do you know what I mean? Um, to really just live out loud and live in my true authenticity. And again, this is not a video to bash anybody. I'm not going to expose any tea about people who I've slept with or anything like that. Now, younger Chris, younger Chris might have done it. Younger Chris would have sat in front of this camera and gave you names, dates, times, and everything. But I just kind of feel like, why? Like, why? what's the point of it? Do you know what I mean? I just recognize the pattern. I recognize the same pattern in the things that I do when it comes to men. And even now, my friends that are straight and guys, like, I really do place a different, like, hold on those relationships versus my other relationships because I know how fragile those relationships can be at times, especially with someone like me. Right? And I'm not saying that I've slept with every straight boy I know because that is not the case. Please don't take it like that. But, you know, even my friends who are straight that we have done nothing together. We are strictly just friends. For example, my roommate, 
um, him being my friend, he has gotten people who have been like, are you gay? You know, you and your roommate sleeping together. Like he's gotten those weird questions, even from girls that he was with. Do you know what I'm, so like, people look at me and my relationships with people who are straight and they automatically will judge them. They will automatically think something of that. And to me, that is a shame. To me, that is why DL men can't live their lives out loud. You know, that there's that fear because they grow up their whole lives watching little gay boys like me get picked on and made fun of for being different. They were part of those groups. And so then to grow up and start to mess with a guy and have feelings for a guy, that that memory, come, you know, like you'll always think someone will make fun of you and not, you know what I mean? I could spend hours on this topic. I could spend hours talking about down low men and the effect it has on the community um, and just how people think they truly are accepting to find out they're not accepting. Do you know what I mean? I've had friends who um, we both like the same guy. Um, and I end up getting with the guy and then I lose my friend because they can't understand why somebody would be attracted to me in that way, right? So this has always kind of been like a slap in my face. And I, I don't know. I don't know. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video. Bye.